This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star today's show is the TMX Force Feedback Racing Wheel by Thrustmaster. This is an entry-level force feedback steering wheel that is PC and Xbox One compatible. This wheel represents one of the least expensive force feedback steering wheels that you can actually get. But the question is, what do you get for $199? We're in that era where more expensive wheels are coming out each and every day. So you got to kind of question this price point. Now, if you're a veteran sim racer and you already have all your gear, then this wheel is not for you. But you still might want to watch. You want to know, is this the kind of wheel that you could actually recommend to a friend? Or if you're new to sim racing or coming from running with a control and wondering if you should step up, we're going to be able to find out how does this wheel really do as an entry-level force feedback steering wheel. This wheel is part of the Thrustmaster ecosystem, or sort of part of the ecosystem. And the reason I say that is, this is not a removable wheel, so you can't use any of the upgraded wheels with this base. However, there is a spot on the back to plug in a TH8A shifter, and this one comes with these pedals, but there's also the pro version of this wheel that comes with the T3PA pedals, or you could buy those later and upgrade this. So it's kind of integrated into their ecosystem. Now to do this review, I really had to get into the mindset of the actual end user or somebody who'd be purchasing this wheel. I mean, I have a Leo Bodner wheel, obviously they're not comparable, but I really had to think about who would be using this wheel and how does it work for them. I mean, if you're out there, obviously, if you have a TX, a T300 or T500, this is a step down. If you have a Logitech G series or any of the Fanatic wheels, this is a step down. And that leaves it sort of all alone as an entry-level, force feedback, multi-platform steering wheel system. But the big question is, would you recommend it to a friend? Is it a good entry-level steering wheel for those looking to upgrade from the controller or starting out in sim racing in general? Now the TMX wheel package comes with both a steering wheel base with a permanently mounted wheel rim and a basic pedal set with a brake and clutch. The wheelbase is very similar in shape to the other Thrustmaster wheels as it is made of plastic and has that familiar Thrustmaster shape without that quick release for the wheel rim. Internally, the TMX wheel uses a belt and gearbox type drive system and is adjustable from 270 up to 900 degrees of rotation that is changed within the Thrustmaster software. The wheelbase has a clamp mechanism that is really designed for desks or tables and has a dual arm clamp that then tightens down with a large bolt with that handle on it. This clamp will adjust from paper thin up to about two inches thick. On the back, there are two wires, one for power and another for the USB to the computer or Xbox. There is a plug spot for the pedals and another one for the shifter if you are using it. On the front is a power LED, an Xbox connection button, and another button for changing the modes of the wheel. The wheel rim is exclusive to the DMX wheel and it is made of hard plastic, but it does have this rubber grip area where your hands go on it. It is a tri-spoke design with a cool silver Thrustmaster logo on the bottom of the center spoke. The wheel is about 11 inches or 280 millimeters in diameter. In total, it has 12 plastic buttons, with four of the buttons being within reach of each thumb while holding the wheel. The top four, two on each side, are labeled with Xbox titles of A, B, X, and Y, and are colored to match the Xbox controller. The middle row, again with two on each side, are colored in black and are labeled LB and RB, also like an Xbox controller. Then the bottom two buttons on the center spoke are black in color and represents the menu buttons for the Xbox. And then there is also a direction pad on the left wheel spoke giving you even more mappable buttons within game. There are two wheel mounted paddle shifters. They're actually made of metal and are curved to match the wheel's shape. The paddles are about five inches long and can be used from just about any hand position on the wheel. The pedal base is a very simple design. It is also made of plastic and it is very small, especially when compared to like the T3PA or any other Thrustmaster or any other pedals I can think of for that matter. There is a gas pedal and a brake pedal and despite the base being small, the pedals are large enough to feel good under your feet. 
The pedals extend up to about five and a half to six inches from the base, with the actual pedal faces measuring four and a half inches tall by three inches wide. In total, the gas pedal has about two and a half inches of range from off to full throttle, while the brake moves about two and a quarter inches from off to full application. Installation was very simple on the PC side of things. Go to the Thrustmaster website, go to their support page, download the drivers for the TMX steering wheel, start installing those drivers. At some point, it will ask you to plug in the wheel, at which point it will recognize the wheel and go ahead and go into calibration. Within the PC software or the Thrustmaster control panel, you do have a few options and there are three tabs to choose from. The first tab is the test inputs tab and you can see what your wheel, your pedals, and you can also see your buttons being pressed. You can also change the degrees of rotation and check for updates here. The next tab is the test forces tab and here you can press a button on the wheel to make the wheel jerk, buck, tweak and turn. You can verify the motors and the drive system are working without being in the game. And the third tab is the Gain Settings tab. This is where you can adjust the strength and feel of your wheel's force feedback. On this tab, you can adjust the overall strength, and then you have four more settings. Constant, Periodical, Spring, and Damper. And then you have the ability to set a center spring or allow the game to do it for you, which is recommended for most games. Now, our wheel is ready to run. If you'd like to know our in control panel settings for the TMX wheel, we will post that at the sim pit with this video, all of our settings per sim that we used for our testing. You can check it out there. But now it's time to actually get this wheel mounted and do our in-game settings before we can actually run it. Before we do that, the sim pit would like to thank its sponsor, RC the makers of the RS1, the N1, and the RS Formula 2 sim racing chassis. Our seat, the makers of the finest sim rigs on earth and made in the EU from high-end parts. Go to rseat.net to check them out for yourself and tell them the sim pit sent you. Now the wheelbase has no way of hard mounting, as I like to call it, or mounting it permanently to any kind of a desk or anything. There are no threaded holes to tap into. It does use this rather large, heavy-duty plastic clamp that is very, it's been known for generations of Thrustmaster wheels at this point. The clamp actually works very well on desktops and tables, but it can be a little large for some rigs. The clamp has a large footprint, and this works well on those large flat surfaces, but it can have some clearance issues on certain rigs. On the outside, the feet end up being six and a quarter inches wide and three and a half inches on the inside. This can be a problem for some center post or narrow wheel decked rigs. However, once the base is in the right spot, just keep turning the handle until it's tight. The pedals on the other hand can be hard mounted. They actually have the two M6 mounting holes on the bottom. They are about eight inches apart, which most rigs will accommodate. So you can hard mount those via the M6 hardware that is not provided. But it's only two holes being drilled away from working on any surface and then using the proper length M6 bolts. Without bolting them down, you're depending on little rubber feet, keeping them from moving on the floor, whatever surface you're using. After all of the installation was complete, and by that I mean downloading the drivers, all of the control panel settings, getting the wheel mounted, doing all of the in-game settings on top of that, it was time to actually run or test this wheel out on track. When I first drove, when I first started testing, I thought to myself, is this thing on? Coming from a much stronger wheel, I almost couldn't feel the force feedback at first, but it definitely was turned on. I could feel the center spring in action, but the overall forces were very light. I immediately used a slightly less powerful grip and allowed my hands to feel what the wheel was doing. Yes, it definitely was on. The wheel turns smoothly for the most part, as in there isn't a lot of friction on it. As I got used to the light feel of the wheel, I did start to feel its effects. It was doing all the same things that you would expect of a force feedback wheel by letting you know what the car was doing. The wheel was getting easier to turn when the rear end was moving, and it was getting stronger or harder to turn when the front wheels were at maximum grip. It's just those effects are very gentle. 
And then there was this fair amount of dead zone. This allowed the wheel to turn a few degrees without registering in the sim. You could see this while standing still and you could also notice it while driving. There's a slight hint of gears being turned that you can feel in the wheel if you concentrate on it, but it really does not take away from the wheel's overall feel that much. In fact, if the force feedback were just slightly stronger, you would feel it even that much less. As I drove more and more and got more used to the wheel, it did allow me to become quite comfortable with the way it operated. Using a gentle touch and doing my best to ignore the dead zone, I started to see, or better yet, feel what this wheel excelled in. The wheel is extremely fast turning and offers little resistance to you when switching its directions. In certain movements, like rally racing, or even when driving less serious sims like Forza Horizon, this can be a huge advantage and even allows this wheel to perform right alongside with any other wheel. I was very happy with the paddle shifters and their overall feel. They have a positive click and a decent amount of tension on them, and the feel of metal is much appreciated here. One funny thing though is they do make a slightly different noise. The right one clicks and the left one sort of thuds, but they feel the same in my hands. When used properly, they are stiff. However, if you pull on them really hard, they do have a little flex in them and this reminds you that you're only on an entry level wheel. The buttons on the wheel also have a decent feel to them. They are plastic, but they do have good travel before engaging and have a positive click on your finger. And the buttons are well placed. Even drivers with small hands will have no problem reaching two buttons on each side and another two on each side with a slight stretch of the thumbs and then the two lower ones require letting go of the wheel to operate. That makes them perfect for pause, escape, pit lane limiter, or anything you don't want to touch by mistake. The D-pad feels a little cheap even when compared to an Xbox controller, but it does work and it adds to the wheel by giving you more options for button mapping. The pedal base is just large enough for my feet to rest comfortably on, not wearing shoes. The base is definitely on the small side of things, and if I had big feet, this could be an issue. The spacing between the pedals feels good for a two foot usage or left foot braking. The spring tension in the pedals is very light as well. There is not much resistance. The brake pedal does have some kind of secondary tension, but despite this, it does not create much variable or progressive feeling. It's just enough to feel slightly different than the gas pedal. And despite the brake having something slightly different about it, they almost feel identical in movement. In fact, if I had to compare the two, this wheel is a lot better at being a wheel than these pedals are at being a pedals. So we've really looked at the full installation of this wheel, everything it takes to get it up and running. We've talked about driving it on track. We've extensively tested it with all the various different sims and gotten a really good feel for what it's made of. So let's now break it down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line starting off with the good, and that this wheel is very cheap or inexpensive. It's a good starter wheel. Good force feedback for the money. Xbox and PC compatible. Very strong clamp for desks and most mounting situations. Full size wheel rim on a low end budget. Very fast turning. Lots of buttons for mapping. Metal paddle shifters. The grip on the wheel feels good on your hands. Worlds better than using a controller when playing an Xbox One title. And now on to the not so good, with the first one and most important being no hard mounts for the wheelbase, no permanent installation. Very light force feedback. A little bit of flex out of the base and the wheel. Dead zone of about two to three degrees. Pedals are lifeless, no brake sensation at all. And the pedals need to be hard mounted or they move all over the place. 
And now on to the bottom line. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is not intended for the seasoned sim racer. This is a starter wheel. This is for the casual driver. And it is through those eyes that I've done this review. I can bash these pedals and tell you how horrible they really are when comparing them to super fine gear. But on the other hand, that isn't necessarily the end user. And the real question was, is this a good starter wheel or could a seasoned sim racer recommend this to a friend? Or could this wheel represent the wheel that we could use to show that sim racing doesn't have to be ultra expensive? I had a friend come over very recently. He had Gran Turismo and Forza experience using a controller, but he wasn't really knowledgeable of sim racing. And he drove my rig and he was completely blown away. And then he asked me, how much does a rig like this cost? And I didn't want to tell him that it would cost him nearly $8,000 to build something like this to race in because I figured that would detour or prevent him from even pursuing the hobby. I want a wheel like this, a wheel at $200 that shows off force feedback, shows off the need for pedals and the need for shifters and all the things we do to be one-to-one -one sim racing to real life driving, which you don't get from a controller. This is a good starter wheel. This is an affordable starting point for sim racing. It will be a good way to judge your enthusiasm for sim racing and then upgrade later and actually even be able to upgrade within this family a little bit as well. It is a strong wheel. I have wrenched on this wheel back and forth on this wheel in a very brutal way. In years past, this was enough to get cheap wheels to skip a gear or make some foreign popping sound. But the TMX stood up to all of that abuse and that makes me think it should last a pretty long time. Now the dead zone that I've mentioned a couple of times, that dead zone was a bit annoying, especially when driving iRacing, Assetto Corsa, or your more precision type sims. But when driving Dirt Rally, when driving Xbox type games like Forza Horizon or Forza, or even when driving Farm Simulator, it really wasn't that noticeable. It seems that the more serious the sim, the more it points out the flaws of this wheel. However, I was able to drive some very good lap times in iRacing once I got completely dialed in with this wheel, so it is quite capable at the same time. Now I focused a lot or most of my attention on the wheel itself, but in sim racing, to be honest, the pedals can be just as important a component. The pedals here are a little underdeveloped and I would have preferred them to be a little larger with a bit more heft and a bit more feedback in their movement. And it took me a little longer to get used to them than it did the wheel. And when I think of the light force feedback of this wheel, I come back to one big thought and that is the typical customer or end user for this wheel. Chances are it's their first time wheel. Chances are they don't have a sim rig. They're gonna be bolting this thing to a desktop or a TV tray, sitting there in front of their TV playing their Xbox and super strong force feedback wouldn't even work that well for them. But this wheel is still worlds above a non-force feedback wheel that you might get for a slightly cheaper price and it is a first step in the right direction for an entry level sim racer. So as a long time sim racer, if you're a long time sim racer, this wheel does not compare to what you're currently using. But if you're new to sim racing, if you're thinking of stepping up from a controller, am I suggesting that you buy a 400, a 600 or over a thousand dollar steering wheel to test out our hobby? No, I'm recommending you get a wheel like this one to find out what sim racing really means to you. And if you get that bug and you have to get more, you can kind of do some upgrades to this one or you can get rid of this one, get some money back and then upgrade your entire setup later once you know that you love this hobby and you want to pursue it further. So I hope you've enjoyed this review of the Thrustmaster TMX Force Feedback Steering Wheel. We have a lot of reviews just like this one at the Sim Pit and I hope you'll check out. This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host Sean Cole and I'll see you on the track.